Good evening, and welcome to What's Your Story? I'm your host, James Ransom Reed, Jr. You know, it's the time of the year when many, many people need help, particularly people who are experiencing food insecurities. My guest today is Susie Wirtz. She's the executive director of the Plainville Community Food Pantry, which is located at 54 South Canal Street in Plainville. We're gonna get right to the meat, if you will, no pun intended of the matter, and how you can help make somebody's holiday just a little bit happier and help get some food onto the plates of people who need it so desperately. Susie, welcome to the show. Thank you for always having me. Not a problem, Susie. You want to talk to us? Just get right to the meat of it. What, what's happening over at the, the pantry? We're, we're very busy at the food pantry. Uh, matter of fact, this week we're putting our baskets together for the folks to pick them up on Saturday. Um, they'll have everything, uh, the, the turkey, chicken, um, all the festive uh, fixings to have a nice holiday basket, holiday how many do you expect to dispense? Right now I'm at 85 households, um, and that would be the seniors and the, and the families. So the, 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 you, you give a complete package to every person? That's everything, the turkey yes. and everything? All the, all the fixings. And, all the fixings. and they come in to, to the pantry and pick it up. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what, how, do you, uh, how do you become eligible to receive your services? They would fill out the application um, and then just bring it to us and we'll kind of look through the application and it'll go on the program. It's for Plainville residents only. I, we get a lot of calls from Bristol and New Britain and surrounding towns, but it's only for Plainville residents. I see. And how many meals have you done this year? Do you have a number? I know our numbers are up. I don't have the exact number, but I know um, during the COVID time, we were seeing maybe three, uh, maybe four households. And now we're doing um, almost every half hour, 10 households a, a day. Um, so we have seen a big increase. And I think the increase is due to the high prices of gas and oil and food. And, you know, all those basic needs have gone up. And those on fixed income or disability or working poor um, can't keep up with the demand of what they need to spend for the basic need. Now, I've been to your food pantry. Would you please describe for the viewing audience how it's set up? Because people who come there, it's like a supermarket, is it not? It's a supermarket. And what I like about our our procedure is it's, it's client choice. And that means when the client comes in, they pick what they want to eat and they put it into a regular carriage and it does look like a grocery store. We also do clothing um, and it looks like a regular department store. Um, we have a lot of beautiful things. We get a lot of good donations. Um, and we also do energy assistance, but we ask people to go to HRA first. They're in New Describe Britain. Describe what that is, H. HRA is um, another agency that helps before we help. Okay. So they have to, there's one in New Britain and there's one in Bristol and it's HRA. That's what they call it. Okay. Um, they could go there and, and fill out the application. And I told all our folks in August, please go sign up because they're booking now into January and February. So in the meantime, the folks are going to run out of oil or the deliverable things. Um, if you're claimed as hardship, that means your electric or your gas that's delivered automatically and not like the oil or the wood or whatever. So I ask everybody, please go as soon as you can so you don't get it later into the year. Now, where do you get the food that you dispense? How do you get it? We get, we've get we been getting better um, donations. Um, donations are way down because people are having a hard time providing for their own family or themselves. So we did see a decrease in our food um, coming in as a donation. Um, but now this November, December, this is where everybody pitches in and it kind of makes up where our downfall was. So. Um, we're doing a food drive this weekend um, at Nazo's. So if anybody can come out and you know donate something, that would be great. Uh, we're, again, what goes out is going to come back in. Um, 
but we're, we're very lucky. Our community is amazing, very supportive, and um, we could not do the work that we do without our community and the people that support us. Now, Susie, the, when I went to your to the pantry, I was struck by the fact of the size of it. Mm -hmm. First of all, I, I sort of had this idea that it's this little tiny thing, but mm -hmm. it's not. You've been involved with the pantry quite a while. Yes. Would you tell the audience how long you've been doing this? I, on this November, I will be um, there 35 years. And you started at the ground floor, did you? I did start at the ground floor. Um, <laughs> were when, you always at the Canal Street address? No, 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 no. When I started, um, there were three other ladies that were the executive director before I came in. Um, and they lasted five years. And when they hired me, the, the girl that I was replacing said that I was only going to last five years. And I, I had to prove her wrong. OK. Um, but no, I, I started in the cellar of Linden Street School, and then we moved from there because they needed the space. Yes. Then we went to Our Lady Mercy Parish Center, where it was the little cafeteria, was 800 square feet. But we were there 10 years, and we're very um, appreciative of them giving us a room. I mean, it was a free space. Um, so then we kind of outgrew the, the facility, and that's when we applied for a grant to build the facility that we have. It was from OPM, and that was, I want to say we moved in in 2000, I think 2000. Um, we moved into the building. So we're there already 23 years. I can't believe that, but wow. Um, so we built the building, um, we designed it, we bought the property, and everything in the building was also donated. So we got the free, free building, everything that's in the building, and the community, again, supplies all the things that we need to help our folks. We do buy um, a lot of things that we don't get in, and um, which, is, which is like condiments and things like that. So um, anything that anybody brings in, it, it doesn't stay on the shelf very long. Mm -hmm. Would you tell the viewing audience for this uh, food drive at Nazo's, mm -hmm. what exactly should people bring? What are you looking for? Right now, um, things like uh, pasta sauce, um, children's cereals, these are all things we're buying. The things that we are buying are the things that you can't buy with food stamps, and that would be anything you cannot eat. Um, they, those are kind of a luxury. Um, so those are the hard things to keep on the shelf, and they're, they're a little bit expensive. Mm -hmm. um, things like peanut butter and jelly, um, those rice pouches with the, and the pasta pouch. People love them. The, the, the bag potatoes, just the instant potato. Um, soups, canned pasta, uh, you know, things like that. Um, children love fruit, canned fruit. We, I don't think we have any on the shelf right now. So when, uh, when is this uh, drive, and how long is it going to last that day? Thursday, we're starting Thursday, and then it's going to go Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. We're, we're not sure about Sunday because we need volunteers um, to help us. So I think Sunday afternoon we'll have some volunteers there. But if there isn't anybody there, there's a bucket um, that anybody can place into that bucket, and we pick it up every Monday. So if, per if a person wanted to bring a turkey, could they do that? They could do that. Um, or do you uh, prefer they bring it directly to the pantry? Well, we're not there on the weekend. So if they buy a turkey, um, you know, Keith has been very generous to allow us to keep it there until we can get it delivered. Oh, OK. Um, the, and uh, Nazos has been amazing with us. I've been working with, before Keith, um, I worked with his dad. And they're, they're pretty good advocates for us. Now, where is Nazos for people who may not know? Where is it located? Nazos is on East Street in Plainville, which is Route 10. Um, I, I can describe it as right next to Dairy Queen. Everybody knows where Dairy Queen okay, is. Okay, right on Route 10. Right. And what time again do you start? What day of the week do you start? We're going to start on uh, tomorrow. Matter of fact, it's Thursday. And I think he said he's going to get there for 11. Um, and he'll stay. When it slows down, we kind of we kind of go because... You know, we, we're going so many days. So if you see the pantry van out there, we're collecting. So Susie, if I had food stamps, mm -hmm. could I then come to the food pantry as well or no? If you have food stamps, um, we're actually doing a soft application now. And the way I say that is I used to ask for everything, um, proof of your residence, proof of your income and all that. 
So I thought about it, and if somebody is already getting food stamps or HRA, energy assistance, or any kind of federal program. They already qualified. They already qualified. Why am I putting them through that? Yes. You know, they're already a victim. Why victimize them more? Yeah. So um, that's a soft application. And, um, you know, we'll work with them and, and tell them what they need to do to maybe give them a better quality of life. Your clientele, Susie, are they largely family units or single parents or older people? What's your clientele or does it cross all spectrums? Uh, well, w families, I, we're not seeing a lot of families. Um, and I think because I think there was a tax break, I don't know if that's still happening, but um, we are seeing families, but not like it used to be um, years ago. And I think because they bumped up things um, for the family and they're, they're getting the free and uh, reduced breakfast and lunch. So I think that's helping the family as well. Um, I think we're seeing more seniors, um, people on fixed income, disability, because everything's gone up, but their, their income has not. To what do you attribute the, uh, the, the ever increasing need for food? Why? I think because if it, a lot of us go into the grocery store and you know everything's gone up. I mean, a while ago, look what we were paying for eggs, and I know that that came down. But um, you know, everything everything's going to go up because if you think about it, the drivers that are, are delivering, their diesel went up, their gas has gone up, and so they have to trickle it down to, to the consumer. And when you have people come there, I mean, it it must be hard for some people to accept food. Um, I think, and I always say this, the people that are coming in there really don't want to be there, but they don't have a choice. Okay. So we try to treat them with dignity and, and show them that I, I could be on that program myself. You never know. You still, nobody knows what's in store for them. So I try to make it as comfortable as possible for them and let them know that, um, you know, this is what we're there for. And I always tell some of them, that if they didn't come there, I wouldn't have a job. Mm -hmm. So we, yep. it was always a, a thing we wanted to put ourselves out of business, but I don't ever see that happening. I remember talking with you quite a while ago, and you gave us some background on your own family growing up mm -hmm. and how your family survived. Mm -hmm. how, what, what guided you to take on this kind of task in the first place? Well, when my pastor asked me if I was interested in a job, I said, I, I never ran a food pantry. I really don't know what to do and whatever. And, and he was like, well, and my mother-in-law said, oh, you'll be great. You'll, you'll pick it up. Don't worry about it. Um, as far as my childhood goes, it was my mom. Um, we lived in Farmington. My mom raised four of us. She worked three jobs. Um, she was a great mother. Um, she worked very hard to keep us together. And there were days that she didn't eat dinner. We came home to no lights. You know, so I understood. I was that child that didn't have the backpack. So that's back in 95 when I decided our folks on our program can't maybe afford that. So now we do the back to school and we do, they get a backpack, all the fixings they need for school. First day of out, a school of outfit and um, new sneakers, I give them a $100 gift card to Kohl's. So um, before COVID, we were even giving the kids a haircut. So they're ready to learn. They're not sitting there wondering why they don't have what the other child has, which I kind of did. Have you seen uh, people who at one point needed your services, recovered, got on their feet, came back and volunteered and helped out? Have Absolutely. You? Absolutely. Um, the one that I always try to talk about is the mom that came in and she was a single mom raising her two children. Yes. And um, she she was on the program sh short term. Um, she put herself through college and then she put her children through college. And now she has a really, really nice job. And I see her at all our events and I give her a big hug. She gives me a hug. And I say thank you to her because it was her that made her be who she is today. You put, put me in touch with her. It sounds like a great story. It would be a good yeah, story. Yeah, it would yeah. sound like a good story. Yeah, yeah. You know, one time you said to me, Jim, hunger is present in every zip code. What I, did you mean by that? Um, just because you live in uh, maybe a, a, 
I'll use Farmington or Avon or Canton, um, you know, Plainville, New Britain, it doesn't matter. If you're in a crisis, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, so it doesn't matter because, and I always say, hunger never goes on vacation. So those folks in, in the, those towns, they all have a food pantry. So, and, and if there's a food pantry there, there's a need. Did you have anything on your notes there, Susie, that you that we did not talk about thus far as we continue with uh, you? I'm at um, right now I'm at 85 households for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Okay. We're actually um, we haven't done the Secret Santa. Um, I would love to get back to that next year, but Good. COVID kind of put a, a damper on that. So what I'm asking, if anybody would like to be a Secret Santa, we're asking for gift cards to Kohl's, um, Nazos, um, Walmart, Target, so I can give to the seniors. Um, because a lot of the seniors don't have family. And when you give them a little gift, and it's a little gift, but they appreciate it and they cry because they were thought about for Christmas. Same thing with the kiddos. I mean, the gift card is good because mom can go shop for her kids. She knows what they want. She knows them. So, but I, next year I want to go back to a, a Secret Santa adopting the child, buying whatever they ask for, and wrap it and bring it back to us. Now, if I remember correctly, you provided coats. Was that your organization for I, winter? We, we have winter coats for kids and adults, yes. I had somebody call today. She needed a, a 3X jacket. She didn't have a jacket, so I was able to find it. was a beautiful jacket, too. She was thrilled. She didn't have a jacket, so. So you, you provide the food. Mm -hmm. You provide them with, uh, with clothes. Mm -hmm. You provide, what else, Susie, did I miss? The energy assistance. The energy. The back, the back to school. Um, oh, the backpacks. Yep. Back and this is all out of the, the Plainville. Yeah. Uh, community food mm -hmm. pantry. Mm -hmm. It's a one-stop shopping. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it's fun. And I always say when it's not fun anymore, it's time for me to leave. But I'm not going anywhere. I love what I do. And when I stop loving it, then I got to go. What do you love about it? What made you fall in love with it? I think um, in the situation growing up, I know what it feels like or felt like. Um, so I, I understand. So... When the people come to me and they go, I really don't want to be here, or they're crying, and you know, I always kind of go back to them and say, look, if, if I didn't help you, I wouldn't have a job. So then I wouldn't make money and be able to survive. So um, I try to make them as comfortable as possible, and you know, they they love it there, and they they feel that we really respect them, and that's what it's about because they don't want to be there. What about volunteers? Do you how do you get your volunteers? Do you have enough mm -hmm. or? Can you always use I'm, volunteers? I'm or? training. I have like six new volunteers. Um, I could use a couple of, of men volunteers that can lift and move things around because actually I, I've been in the warehouse more than ever this past uh, couple of years, along with Justin and, you know, the other volunteers. Um, we, we would welcome anybody that would like to just come get a tour and, and fill out the application and I always have one volunteer train them so we're all on the same page because everybody trains somebody different. Ah, uh -huh, okay. So this way everybody's on the same page and not doing it different because it gets kind of chaotic. Are you funded and has your funding been cut or? Our funding, most of our funding, I'm going to say 64% of funding is from our community and um, some fundraisers we do. Um, we get a, a state grant, which is helpful. Um, but the community always steps up to the plate. As a matter of fact, I'm doing the holiday giving letter. Um, I think that's going out this week. So we're at Nazos and we're mailing out a, a plea for support. Um, and, and those dollars goes back into buying food and, and helping the folks with oil or lights, whatever, whatever it is. Do you find people particularly more generous? This time of the year? Oh, this time's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? I, this that is, is my favorite. This is my favorite time of year. Um, the busier I am, the better I like it. Yeah. The crazier I am, I like it. Yeah. Because I know we're doing a lot of good. And 
your clients walk out of there with their dignity mm -hmm. and with some food. With some food, and and they they leave in tears at times. Um, the one story I remember telling you is I, I had a mom come in. She had a two-year-old. Yes. And she said she had no food to feed her baby. And yes. I, wow, I was like, wow, we'll be okay. So um, we'll help you. And I gave her everything she needed to feed that baby. I just kind of chill, actually. Um, I've been here a long time. And to see a mom have to come in there and say, I can't feed my baby. Mm. I mean, I could not imagine that. Mm. So we helped her out. She's now working, and she's doing well. But I did break down. Yes, absolutely. I did. You'd have to be made of stone if you did. Well, if I, yeah, exactly, exactly. But I'm, a, I'm pretty tough. Yeah. But I, I understand, and and uh, that's what we're there for to help people. And when you took on this mission, mm -hmm. friend, your pastor said, "Susie, you got to do this." Yeah. And you said, "I have no idea what I'm doing." Right. Your faith guided you, Susie? Did it? Absolutely, absolutely. Because my mother-in-law said, you can do it, you know, and I, I was like, okay. And, you know, it was very hard to learn. Um, I was lucky, though, I had a volunteer that was there way before I was there. And she kind of mentored me and took me under her wing. She knew everybody in town, so she started introducing me to people. And then I started speaking out at, like, the Rotary Clubs or the clubs and churches and things. So then they got to know me um, as the Plainville Food Pantry. And uh, actually, I got a nickname of Susie Food. <laughs> um, I like that. Yes, yeah, Su food. Susie Food. Um, right. yes. Yeah, a lot of people still call me that. But, um, you know, I, I'm glad I took the job. And um, I, I'm, I'm really happy that we had got as far as we did. And we are in a 5,000 square foot building. And we also have been modeled after um us like we did cheshire food pantry i think they're 6,000 square foot building they modeled after us bread for life um the farmington food pantry um one in hartford and then um enfield i think enfield shelf and then there's one in plymouth and a couple more um which is really an honor and that just shows yeah. our community that you know we're, we're state of the art, and uh, I, I'm very proud of everybody that's worked there and helped us get to where we are. Tell people once again where you're located and what your phone number is. We're at 54 South Canal Street in Plainville, and our number is 860-747-1919. And come for a tour. People walk in, they go, I didn't know you had clothes. I didn't know you did this. I didn't know you did that. So... Um, Stop by and, and look at look at what we really are doing. And we're very supported by the, our community. Are you still taking turkeys at present for people? I'm still taking turkeys. Um, what about hams? Do, do they get uh, I have I had several people say uh, they'd like a ham. And um, I usually do that for Easter. Okay. All right. But um, if anybody wants to drop a ham off, we have a list of people that really would like a ham. Yes. Um, but they... Um, they're happy with a turkey or a chicken, so. Well, Susie, I don't know what to say other than I'm, I'm blessed to have this opportunity to talk to you. Thank you. And to know a person like you, to know that with all the struggles and turmoils and strife in the world, mm -hmm. there are people like you. And we have a tendency to forget that. You know, there are people who volunteer that help you mm -hmm. put food in the stomachs of, right. of other people. I mean, let's be realistic. If you don't eat, what, is, what else is there? You know, if you don't have a meal, if you, you know, you and I are blessed, we can, mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about where that next meal right. is coming from. Right. And, and we need to stop for a moment and think that there are people who are crying because they can't feed their babies. Yeah. And uh, we have to step up and do what we can. Mm -hmm. And I'm so very proud of you and people like you who step up. Thank so you. Uh, thank you for being here, Susie. Thank you. All right. Always have fun with you. Absolutely. That's all the time we have for this particular show. <laughs> What's your story? Everybody has a story. I'm your host, James Ransom Reed Jr. Until next time, good night.
Nick Augustino right here at the East Side Restaurant. We always have the complete full dinner menu. Knockwurst, bratwurst, sour broughton, potato pancakes, red cabbage, rice pudding, cream pies, all the desserts that Germany had to offer. I always do something different. Yes, I do. I brought seafood to the beer garden at the East Side Restaurant. East Side Restaurant, your German destination restaurant in Connecticut. Tiggy talking, tiggy talking, hoi, hoi, hoi. Follow us on Instagram at nutmeg.tv.